good as the break is, and he probably has really high spin rate and all that kind of stuff, but when it stays kind of center cut, guys have pretty good cuts at it. So um, it, 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 it's a, it, it's a, he's a head scratcher. He really is because you see that stuff, you see that arm, you see that mentality, and you say, man, this guy should be really good. The starting pitching has been really pretty good statistically. They've basically given you representative quality start type outings, but they aren't going particularly deep in games, which has led to middle relievers getting overexposed a little bit. So are you happy with the starting pitching, or do you think they have to go deeper? Well, you always want you guys to go deeper. Sometimes that's, um, you know, sometimes that's a managerial decision where a guy could have gone uh, mm-hmm. uh, deeper. And, and uh, you know, you can debate – uh, whether uh, Odorizzi should have come out of the game, you know, when he did uh, his last start, uh, I know he wasn't all that happy about it. You can you can debate uh, about uh, Pineda uh, on uh, Sunday, but uh, against Oakland. But by and large, I'm extremely happy with the starting pitching, and uh, I, I think it's been a lot better then we had any reason to think that it might be this year, one through five. I mean, Michael Pineda, as a fifth starter, I mean, he's, he's just a – he has been a quality start throwing machine. Now, I know that, you know, the quality start – I mean, for me, the quality start stat is, you know, we, all, we have to live with that as a stat and expect that that's, that's going to be a good thing, right? I, and, you know, the quality start is six innings and giving up three runs or less. Well, three runs – in six innings is a 4.5 ERA uh, for uh, for you know for nine innings, and it, it always makes me think that somewhere, uh, you know, Bob Gibson and Sandy Koufax are throwing up in a bucket somewhere at 4.5 being uh, being the acceptable <laughs> the acceptable bar now, mm-hmm. you know, for for a quality start. But that's where we are, right? So, and this Twins team is really built on that. If if the twin starters go six innings and score three runs and, and give up three runs, then uh, they should win the game. The twins should win the game. They should they should score enough runs and uh, to uh, to win the game. So uh, I, I'm I'm extremely happy with the starters. I think they I think if you, if I'm a player on that uh, twins team, if I'm in the lineup, I run out the field and I look at the starting pitcher, whoever it is, and I, and I say, yeah, we got a chance. I would say we got a chance to win this game. Absolutely, and it doesn't always happen, but all you can do is is give your team a chance. And I think the starters have done that. I would like to see the you know the bullpen uh, sh- short up a little bit or have somebody emerge to uh, take some of the heat off of uh, Taylor Rogers. Oh, absolutely. Uh, I have a thought of the quality start thing. I do want to uh, thank Tony Hoagland, H-O-A-G-L-U-N-D. Tony Hoagland, your State Farm agent, Champlin, handles my insurance, handles Michael's insurance, offers financial services, and is an all-around good dude. Hey, Minnesota sports fans. This is your local State Farm agent, Tony Hoagland. I need you all to ask yourselves this question. If you're in an at-fault car accident and you are sued for $700,000, how much of that $700,000 will my current insurance company pay? If you are unsure or can't answer all 700000 you need to give us a call. State Farm has been number one in car insurance since World War II and number one in homeowners insurance since 1964. For a no-obligation review of your current policies, call us at 763-421-4900 or check out our website at www.champlininsurance.com. My old friend John Lowe from the Detroit Free Press basically invented the quality start stat, and you hit on both aspects of it. Yes, at its worst six innings three earned runs or fewer uh that's a four five era but the reality is if you go through twins season by season they win a huge percentage of their quality starts they always win 60 or 70 percent of their quality starts so even though it's not exciting even though it sets a very low bar statistically the reality is if you get quality starts and you're a decent team that can score runs you're going to win a lot of games yeah, and and you know the natural extension obviously is your your bullpen's got to be uh, has got to be right. good. You know, I mean the reason that Cleveland uh, has been good, the reason that Houston has been good is you know they've got starters that that won't limp through six innings and three runs. I mean they will they will power th- you know through six innings and three runs uh, or less. Um, it, you know if you don't have to if you see 
you know, back in the day, you know, Kluber when he was healthy and, and Carrasco when he was healthy and Bauer. I mean, you, you see these guys for two, maybe three at bats, and then you have to see uh, Andrew Miller and, you know, and uh, Cody Allen when he was, you know, when he was good. And it just makes it, uh, it, it makes it really hard on, on hitters. Uh, and that's the way the twins, as I said, are kind of set up now. They can, they can get you through the sixth for the most part or, uh, and with a chance to win the game. And then you just have to, you have to be able to close the deal. And, and um, the, the twins have just been a little bit light so far in being able to be lights out, <clears throat> excuse me, in the seventh, eighth, and ninth. Yeah. And, and the other thing about the quality starts that is seven innings and two runs is a quality start too. And that looks a lot better statistically. So we're, we just talk about, you know, the, the bare minimum for, for, for acquiring that stat or for achieving that right. stat. Now let's talk about Adrian's really quick. I wrote about him today. Is Roy since May 12th, I think it is. He hasn't hit like a guy who's gotten a little hot or a guy who's, you know, had a few balls fall in or seeing the ball. Well, he's hit like Mike Trout since May 12th. What the hell is happening? <laughs> here? You know, I, I, I couldn't be happier for anybody uh, in the game. Uh, th- and then uh, other than, uh, more than uh, A. Ray Adrianza. He came over here a few years ago, and, and his reputation was absolutely set in concrete that he would never, ever hit. Really good defensive player, can play shortstop very well, can play other places, uh, but he would never, ever hit. The first half of that equation is uh, is absolutely uh, true. He's a good defensive player. He, I like to say when you put him around the field and he's incredibly competent wherever you put it. I mean, just very, you, you just know the ball's going to hit to him. He's going to make the play. And uh, he's been terrific at that. But while he's been doing that as a defensive player, uh, and uh, you talked about how he, uh, in your article and in the paper, how he has made himself stronger, and he has. He's a, he's a very strong, uh, muscular uh, guy now. But in addition to that, uh, he has worked really hard with Rudy Hernandez in particular uh, in the James Rouse and Rudy Hernandez hitting coach tandem. And Rudy, I mean, to his credit, went to him and said, hey, you can hit. Let's let's make you more offensive. It really was just a question of, you know, let's not be a little um, light hitting, slap the ball around. Let's let's get you some hitting mechanics that will enable you to start getting the feel for driving the ball. That combination with um, getting um, with getting stronger uh, has has resulted in he walks up to the plate now, and I just soon see him, see him up there as uh, just about anybody he thinks he can hit and he's delivering you know hitting mechanics that would 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 back his uh back up what he thinks about himself and uh i gotta tell you it's i know a little something about someone coming to you and saying you you can hit we need to get you more offensive and oh and oh by the way then while i'm doing that i'm going to get stronger because that's exactly what what i did and i was it's ironic, and you know, in my career, I went from a good field, no hit shortstop like Adrianza, to uh, by the end of my career, people were saying, "Yeah, he he can really hit, but he doesn't have that great a range." You know, <laughs> so yeah. uh, I've been I've been through all of it, and uh, regardless of what people say, you know, the player has the most to say about it, and Adrianza is making a statement for sure. Who came to you and told you you could hit? Gene Mock. Yeah, I thought so. He, he yeah. what's that? I, I thought that was the answer. I just wanted to. Yeah, yeah. He said. He said, "Okay, we're gonna we're gonna figure this out." I've known you too long. I've seen you too long as a kid growing up and and doing different things at USC and different places. He said, "I, you know, we're gonna we're gonna figure out uh, how you can uh, you can drive the ball like you can on a consistent you know on a consistent basis and and uh, you know that and the, the weightlifting that I did and you know the it, it attempts to get stronger it really really turned my career around thanks to bite squad bite squad.com use the promo code talk north to get your first delivery fee wave they deliver all kinds of great restaurants breakfast lunch dinner uh anywhere uh, your office your home your friend's house or your barbecue whatever great restaurant quality food no hassle uh upload the 
Bite Squad app, upload your information. It makes it really easy. I do it all the time. Bite Squad, BiteSquad.com. Uh, do it because they uh, bring you good food. Do it because they've supported this network. We do appreciate uh, their support. So one thing I heard a lot over the weekend around, in and around the clubhouse is, you know, Polanco has a – Polanco, Kepler, Rosario, Buxton before he went on the I.L. I'm, I'm hearing that they have had – everybody playing hurt lately and they've had a lot of people playing through injuries because they felt like they couldn't go on the disabled list or the injured list because everybody else is playing hurt. so you know it it sounds to me and this doesn't sound like excuse making this is from people who i trust it sounds to me like one of the reasons for the the slight offensive drop-off has been just guys aren't themselves right now well it's really true i mean it's abs- it's absolutely true um uh, CJ Crone's thumb is bothering him an awful lot and, 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 uh, has been for, uh, some time. Kepler's been banged up with a, with a knee. Of course we know about Buxton Rosario's ankle, you know, is twisted. It's hard to, it's, it's, it's hard to, you know, be anywhere close to who you are when you're, when you're on, uh, you know, one bad wheel. And, uh, I mean, everybody is banged up. I, I don't know what is going on with Polanco, but I've seen him in the batter's box and there's something, you know, has been going on for at least a month with him. Uh, I just noticed on certain swings and, and even, even take taking some pitches there, there's something going on uh, with him. They're all banged up and um, it's not an excuse. You play through it. You do the best you can. But I mean, I think it was Lavelle in the paper today uh, pointed out that since June 4th, uh, the, the twins have not had, Rosario, Buxton, mm-hmm. Kepler in the same lineup since June fourteenth. I mean, right. let that sink in. Let that sink in. And Buxton is, I think, statistically is worth like two runs a game more than when he's when he's not. I mean, it, it, it's it's silly to say that the Twins are collapsing. It's silly to say that um, you know they're they're uh, they're going to just go, go back to being a, a mediocre team. This is a team that it has. Uh, held itself in there through a lot of injured list players and a lot of players that could have, as you say, could have gone on the injured list. And I don't care what anybody says. You build a lineup uh, and take the take the field with a certain lineup that is the one that is going to make you be a contender and then don't play with that lineup for over a month, uh, it, that lineup intact, I defy any team to uh, you, you know, to continue to uh, you know to to play like they did the first two months of the season. So I, I I just think it's it's silly to have you know any kinds of conversations and thoughts in in that direction. And, and Roy, that's one of the reasons I like this team. And listen, I covered Twins teams. I did not think that highly of. I didn't think I highly of their leadership or their clubhouse or their makeup or the way they played. And I like this team. I, I see guys playing hurt. I see guys who play together. I see great leadership from Cruz. And as, you know, Thad Levine told me, also Marwin Gonzalez. You know, I see pitchers who want the ball. Uh, you know, I, I – listen, none of us can – well, I can't predict the future. You've actually been pretty good at it. Uh, but most of us can't predict the future. Who knows what happens the rest of the season. But I, I see a team that that is doing everything it can do. I totally agree. And, and it really is – is nothing more to be said uh, for that. The team is doing everything it can do, and we as fans of the team need to recognize that hitting comes and goes, and it's a beautiful, th- for example, and it's a beautiful thing when everybody's hitting at the same time like they were for the first two months of the season. Uh, but when it, but then that's going to turn around, and not everybody's going to be hitting, and if you get – you know, three or four or five guys banged up and not swinging it real well, you're going to, you're going to struggle a little bit. That's just the vagaries. That's what happens in a, in a baseball season. So, um, you know, I, I'm not in the prediction business. There are some things that occur to me that, you know, I, I can see, you know, uh, things that could potentially happen that, as you said, have, have turned out that way. But, uh, I also see this team as a talented team and as a gutsy team. And I, I for that reason, and for, if they're able to get people healthy and stay healthy the rest of the year, if they can play with their, 
normal outfield for the whole second half of the season. Um, if if Crone gets healthy, if they you know all of these things, if, if they're able to do that, they're going to win the division. I, I, there's not any doubt in my mind. Yeah, yeah, oh yeah, what condition? I-